The B.C. Liberals are promising that if elected, they'll embark on an ambitious $1.5 billion plan to improve addictions recovery treatment in the province. And local MLA Norm Letnick is getting behind it. Do you support an investment of this size? Absolutely. You know, we've been trying, we as the government, I'd say all, all 87 MLAs have been trying to address the whole situation of mental health and addictions for many, many years. And uh, what we're doing isn't working. So we have to try something different. And uh, this, this investment that Kevin Falcon announced should we form government in the next election of $1.5 billion towards mental health and addictions, uh, I think is key because not only is it continuing what we're doing now, but it's expanding on those services. And it's making sure that uh, when someone needs help, they get help right away. They don't have to say, you know what, I'm on drugs or alcohol and wow, I think I should get off. Can I, can I do that? And say, so, yeah, you come back in three months. We'll, we'll find you a place. No, it doesn't work. So we have to make sure that we have services for people that don't cost them any money. So there's no user fee at the front door. They come in, publicly paid for, and get their services they need when they need them, and then uh, continue to support them as they travel through their journey to recovery. $1.5 billion. It does make you shudder a little bit. And I, I take it there are even some members of your own party that are having a hard time swallowing that. Well, you know, we are a big tent party, Kent, and uh, you'll have people on all different kinds of perspectives as to where priorities should be. Um, this is a key priority for our citizens. You know, not only have we seen thousands, over 10,000 people die of, uh, of overdose in, in the last six years since uh, the state of emergency was declared, we've seen many, many people right here in the Okanagan pass away because of that. Uh, I know I myself, I've been to a funeral or two, on, on that and uh, it's it's devastating and we have to do something it is a health issue it's not a moral issue right and we've seen legislation take effect even this past week where we've now decriminalized small possessions of some of these uh, drugs but even advocates of that say you know we favor this but for it to really succeed it needs to be coupled with more supports for people who need them who are suffering with addictions. Well, you know, you, you look at south of the border and you have many instances where they decriminalized, right? Uh, I think in, in Oregon there's one, and the numbers have, have not gone down. So you can't just do uh, decriminalization. And if you talk to the police, you probably find out right now, they're not arresting too many people that carry a little bit of, uh, of drug for their personal use. So in essence, we already have been seeing the results of that. And the results of that are, are more people getting uh, you know, getting overdose uh, uh, recovery, uh, uh, ending up in hospitals, ending up dead. So, so do you like this uh, treatment instead of decriminalization, or as well as? No, we're not. We're not talking against harm reduction. You know, we think harm reduction has its place, but it can't just be there. You, you know, we can't just rely on people being able to walk to to judge whether or not a system is working. It, yeah, you know, we're able to save some lives. Not as many as we should, but we're able to save some lives. But what are we left with? What are those people left with? What kind of lives are they left with? And we want to get people to recovery. We want people to get off the drugs and alcohol. We want people to be able to live functioning lives. Unfortunately, some of them, uh, you know, their brains are just so fried that uh, they become, uh, you know, harm to themselves or, or the community. And, and part of Kevin's uh, announcement says that, yeah, we're going to have to put some people away involuntarily. Uh, if they're going to be harm to themselves or the community. So that's part of the solution as well. Right. So d it, does it uh, sound like it would be a certainty to include reactivating portions of uh, Riverview Hospital that was shut down so many years ago? Well, uh, prior to um, the NDP forming government, we, uh, we had stated uh, and put into place reactment of Riverview, much smaller scale. So that's there now. Uh, the proposal by us, uh, by Kevin, is to uh, triple the size of that and to also put regional centres across the province, including one in the Thompson Okanagan. So the short answer to your question is yes, yeah. not to the extent and the, and the model that was there when Riverview was there, uh, you know, smaller scale, distributed throughout the province, uh, different uh, kind of, uh, of level of service. Uh, but yes, if someone is, needs involuntary treatment, we need to have the services there for them as well. Terrific. Thanks for your time today. Okay, Ken. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.